upgrades. Some people think, I think most people would think that, that you know, you can upgrade your 40 mil bench top or 60 mil bench top, and they think this is the thickness of the actual bench top. Mm. It's not. You know, you might think oh, I'm getting a 40 mil bench top because it's stronger. It doesn't work like that. Mm. The bench top always stays. It's fine if you, when you're ready, we're ready, I'm ready, ready to start. Yeah. Hello, welcome back to the number one home building podcast in Australia. This week, we are talking about everything to do with your kitchen. So we're calling this podcast Kitchens 101. Um, hopefully we can give you some really helpful advice and maybe even, uh, you know, get you thinking about things in your kitchen that you may not have considered. Um, so I'm super excited for this one. Um, as usual, let's kick ourselves off introducing ourselves. I'm going to have to come up with a different introduction. I know. Max. I was just thinking that as well. In the meantime, it's yeah. Chris Baptista, <laughs> director of Homes by CMA, one of the largest and best builders in Queensland. Boom. Love it. Uh, so I'm Jaden Peters. I am the marketing manager for CMA. So I've got a bit of a list here of what I want to go through. But one of the first things is a lot of people um, don't even know is obviously you come into your color selection and you have your you know color selection for everything you want in your house including your kitchen mm -hmm. it generally starts with your cabinetry right well not really but sort of it hmm? starts usually with the outside of the house and then you go inside the house no but when i'm talking about <laughs> the kitchen directly not the color selection oh yeah like the when kitchen. you start doing the kitchen yeah, you yeah, start choosing does, the color yeah. of it. i'll have to specify <laughs> <laughs> Do it? No, it's good. I'll right, we'll leave good. that shit in. Right, um, <laughs> but yeah, so the ca cabinetry color, right? Um, so we use Polytech as our, uh, you know, as our company that uh, supply our cabinetry and the uh, different grains and- Yeah, two and main suppliers. So we got yeah. Polytech and we got Laminex. Mm. Uh, we use Polytech, uh, but both have similar-ish uh, products mm -hmm. and both have similar-ish uh, colors. Mm -hmm. um, no one is better than the other in my opinion anyway, but um, yeah. It. We use both. For sure. And uh, both companies will also have then a, you know, different range of designs, whether that's the colors or the finish or the different types of grain or whatever. And they also vary in price, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's definitely, there's more options than, and, and there's options that people wouldn't even think about. Mm -hmm. From the profiles of the doors to the handles to, to, to sort of everything, those companies have so many options that yeah, most people would have even no clue as to what, what is on offer. So the mm -hmm. first thing actually to recommend is go on the Polytech uh, website mm -hmm. and have a look at all the offers. The brochures are on the website mm -hmm. and it's plenty, plenty of information on those brochures. Mm. Yeah, awesome. And so what would be the classified as a standard range for those? And what is it? What's the difference between a standard and the premium? Yes, yeah, so usually if you have anything that's high gloss, mm -hmm. it's a premium finish. Mm -hmm. So whether you are talking the Createk range, which is a high gloss type of melamine door, mm -hmm. um, or you have another range, which is not really Polytech, it's more so from the cabinet maker side of things, and that's a two-pack finish. Two-pack is uh, simply a painted door, mm -hmm. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be high gloss. You can have a two-pack finish with a satin finish. Uh, you can have a two-pack finish with a high gloss finish. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's again, a different thing. But if we come back to the door and what sort of Polytech offers, mm -hmm. or uh, sort of Laminex, because it is the same thing. Yeah. Um, so you have your melamine range. So the melamine range is just a standard finish. Uh, you can have plenty, plenty of options. I don't know how many colors we have on this place, but there's a lot. There's probably oh, about 50 or 60. Definitely. And you can have your timber look, uh, you can have your colored uh, self cabinetry. Uh, but yes, once you go into the matte finishes or once you go into the high gloss, the price point goes up. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just because of the, the work that is required to do those yeah. work. And then once you go then into one step further, which is the profile door. So if you want a Hamptons home, or if you, I guess, even want a modern home with a Hampton style door, yeah, like a coastal type of finish or whatever, uh, those doors are again another price point because those doors are a profile door. And again, there's so many profiles. Um, so what do you mean by profile for people who don't know? So it's called the shake door. Mm -hmm. um, and so most doors, are, are simply flat. I guess they have no profile. It's a flat uh, kitchen door. Mm -hmm. uh, the profile door means it has uh, a texture to it. So what I mean by that texture, is- Texture, a bevel. 
Yeah, know? so you could have a flat door mm. and for example, you have say a 60 mil uh, sort of perimeter frame and the inside is recessed in. That's it. Yeah. So that's a profile door. It could be recessed in five mil, it could be recessed in 10 mil, mm -hmm. the profile could be wider, the profile could be rounded, uh, beveled edge, there's so many, so many profiles you can have. Mm -hmm. And basically where those doors are more, so first of all, they're more because of the profile, and then they're more because they are usually a thermal laminated uh, door. What is a thermal laminated door? <laughs> Took me a bit of time to say this word. <laughs> yeah. It's a say it three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what I mean. <laughs> it's basically a door that has a vin vinyl wrap um, that is wrapped all around, I guess. Yeah. So as opposed to a melamine door, and if you have a look at the door, because you might not have paid attention, but a melamine door has an edge all around, which is usually a PVC edge. Mm -hmm. And that's just to finish the sides of the door. A vinyl wrap or a two-pack finish doesn't have that edge. So mm -hmm. I guess if you think of it this way, it's a it's a neater finish on the yeah, edges. A bit more clean. Yeah. A bit more clean, but at the same time, I personally don't see anything wrong with a PVC edge and it actually yeah. looks pretty cool. I agree. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where the prices and everything go with doors. And again, you can then have a melamine finish that is also more expensive uh, if you have Texture to it. So we talked about texture, but this one is a bit different. You could have a timber grain yeah. where as opposed to a timber look door, which might look timber, but it's completely smooth. Yeah. You could have a timber look door, which has actually the texture of a real uh, timber door. So that's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. And it looks good too. Looks super cool. It looks good too. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So you've chose the color and everything like that. Now it's time to actually choose the actual sort of type of drawer you want. It comes mm. with lots of other features. So you've got everything from, you know, soft clothes to bloody, like you said, beveled edge. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned before the type of handles you want. Uh, yeah, so overhead cabinets. That's right, yeah, soft clothes is a must. Yeah. Um, I don't know if builders don't do it nowadays as a standard, but I would be hoping that they do it as a standard because it's a must to have. Mm -hmm. um, particularly in things like drawers and doors really, it, it's, it's just much nicer and it feels more luxurious, I guess. You know, when you close your drawer, you don't have to wait for it to close. And particularly yeah. if you have kids, mm. if you have kids, you know, they're, they're most likely will be yeah, slamming, slamming those, those drawers. Um, so yeah, soft close is a must. Then you have a few different options. So with the overhead cabinets, so the ones that are sitting on top, I guess you have a few options you can put a handle. Mm -hmm. Um, or what we very often do is we drop the doors about 20 mil, so two centimeters, mm -hmm. and we have what, what we call a finger pull. So yeah. there's no handle, it's a slick uh, sort of finish, and all you have to do to open the door is just grab the bottom and just open it. Looks good. So that's one option. Um, then you also have the push to open. So the push to open, like the name says, you just push the door, uh, you basically click onto uh, something inside and, mm -hmm. and the door would push open. Yeah. So then you still have to grab the door and open that. Now, something to be mindful about the push to open, and I will say this because I had it mm -hmm. in one of the houses I built for myself, and it is very annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I mean by I that is, say it, but I was like, okay, if so. you have it in, in your overheads, it's no issue. If you have a fridge cabinet, if you have overheads, that's fine. It, you know, I, I say that, but at the same time, I find it a little bit yeah, annoying. Yeah, I think yeah. you push and open. If you don't push in the right spot, it mm. might not work, and particularly if you have drawers. Mm. But now if you have it in your base cabinets and you have drawers and when you're gonna be cooking or when you're gonna be prepping food and if you need to touch that drawer, yeah, you knock it. You will knock it open <laughs> yeah. all the time. So I'm gonna say don't do it yep. because you will regret it. So um, so the other option that we do now uh, a lot mm. and we even have it on display homes and everything is the beveled edge. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the classy finish, that is where you don't see the door handle, but it looks nice and it's really practical, is the beveled edge. The beveled edge is basically, uh, like the name says, I guess, a 45 degree, yeah, yeah. the beveled <laughs> edge, like on the drawer. I don't know if people can see it, I guess, but uh, you grab the top and you just slide it open. Um, super easy to use. Mm. And also what you can do is you can mix and match. So you could have, uh, for example, the front panel in a timber look yeah, and the beveled edge strip could be black. Nice. So you could mix and match the, the soft colors. It's practical, it looks great. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you don't have the issue that you have with the push to open, so yeah. Um, so yeah. And what I like is that even though it's yeah beveled edge, it's still got that really nice flush look to it as well. Oh, it's great. It I, so I, I think the look is, um, uh, I mean, I love the look, yeah. yeah. I, I think agree. if I had to pick a look, it would be the uh, beveled edge, mm -hmm. except from going Hamptons. Yeah. And Hamptons, I would probably Pick like some kind of half moon handle brush yeah. brass or something around those lines. Mm. Uh, and again, handles, um, 
There's so many available. Okay. You might think 10, 20, 30. There's literally hundreds of designs from the black, the stainless, the satin, the brush brass. The, the, you literally have pretty much everything. Yeah. And you also have Morton Range. You have Hamptons Range. You, 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 <laughs> the you, list goes on. The list goes on. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, if you have a Hamptons house, it, I, I think it is nice to have a handle. That's it. And you can, um, you can choose those two. That's it. You can spend um, several hours choosing a handle. Several hours and choosing and a handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Your alarm's going off. Um, cool. So a lot of uh, other extra things, and I know we're just sort of really jumping into this podcast, is a lot of people don't know they can uh, get uh, other drawers and stuff into their kitchen and they can mix and match different types of drawers. Yes. So how it works, and again, a lot of people may not know that. Most builders, when we do kitchen and cabinetry, everything is custom made. Mm -hmm. So you can have everything you want. You can have the heights of the drawers you want as long as you specify it to your builder. That's it. For so, example, if you've got a really big pot or something- That's exactly right. Get it a little bit bigger, it'll fit perfectly in. Yeah, how Simple. many times have I met clients and you, you know we got three pot drawers, but they want the bottom one to fit this particular pot and mm. that pot needs to have 200 mil of space, so mm. you can adjust everything. Same thing with the width of doors, width of drawers, it's all custom made and it shouldn't cost you any more to go custom made because mm -hmm. that's what it is, that's yeah. how uh, cabinet makers do it. And if a cap, if, if a bell is gonna tell you, oh, it's gonna be more expensive to go uh, custom made, yeah. I would be really worried about the cabinetry they use because it's probably either from Bunnings yeah. or Ikea yeah, or like something along those lines which you don't really wanna have in your house, so yeah. 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 Awesome. So you've got the cabinetry and another great thing and a perk of being custom as well is you can then accessorize those cabinets. Definitely. So you can begin to add things like if you want like a spice rack or mm -hmm. if you want to pull out bin or loads of other things. They're yeah. super cool features. Yeah. Hey, Spice racks are really good. Um, to put your spices on. <laughs> yeah, 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 as the name suggests. <laughs> no, but it's very good. You know, spices are one of those things. I mean, you know, some people buy like the cool uh, things that you see on your bench. Yeah. But if not, a really nice spice rack, because at least you can pull it out and you got all your spices there. It's neat, mm -hmm. it looks really good. Um, you get pull out bins as opposed to, you know, you go to like Bunnings, buy one of those cheap bins that yeah, yeah. comes out of the door. Uh, arenas pull out bins, in my opinion, is a great thing to have in your kitchen. I agree. I think we charge three forty nine, if I remember well. Yeah, something like so, that. So, yeah. you know, it's a pretty good price uh, considering it's a quality bin and um, looks really great. It's hidden um, and you can have the two bins. So you can have the, your front one, which is a standard one, and you can have the recycle bin at the back too. So there's two spots. That's it. Um, it's a win-win. Yeah, so it's a win-win. <laughs> uh, I mean, and then it's a win win with the bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then the list. <laughs> and then the list goes on. Uh, we've done houses which you haven't seen yet, but we've done houses where the overheads are a push to open, but electric. So what you do is you push your door and the door opens uh, up on its own. That's and cool, that's yeah. super cool. It's like a folding door that goes on top like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, super <laughs> cool. Uh, and then you can even like have built-in pantries. So, you know, mm. again, like the spice truck, but a massive like version when you pull it out and you got a massive pantry mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. all the uh, stainless steel uh, sh shelving and uh, great thing to have too. Yeah. Particularly if you have a kitchen that doesn't have a lot of space, yeah, you definitely. know, like if you have like a smaller house or granny flat and you still want all this storage, but you haven't got much space, this mm. is great to have. Mm. Uh, drawers, a, a you know, again, some people might think, oh, it's just doors and I can't change it. You can change yeah, it. Yeah. Drawers are more expensive, about $95 each, if mm -hmm. I remember well. Uh, but drawers, uh, I guess if I had a look at all the houses we sell, I would say 90% of people add more drawers to That's their kitchen it. because yeah. it's a lot more practical yeah. as opposed to having the two doors. And it looks good. You I know? agree, yeah. Not just in terms of practicality, but in terms of looks. Uh, drawers, like you see at the back there, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so you can have drawers. Uh, you can have wine racking too. For example, fridge, you have yeah. an overhead cabinet. You've done that at your house. I have, yes. Uh, <laughs> Jaden had a fridge and it had no overhead cabinets. Mm. And let's face it, it looked pretty shit. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So now <laughs> you've got a wine rack and you might be able to fit what? 20 bottles or something around those yeah, lines? Like that. About yeah. those, those things. And it, I think it changed the whole space. I agree. Just yeah. just having a wine rack there. Yeah. Um, Looks good, covers up the hole. You don't see the, like, uh, the fridge pipe that we're on that's exactly back. right. Yeah, so wine good. racking, and then you know you can tell your builder, for example, if you want to add a wine fridge, if you want to add a bar 
bar fridge. You know, you might have a lot of entertaining mm. and you really would love to have a bit of a bar fridge on the side of your kitchen. Why not? All we have to do is leave the space for it That's and it. you can have a bar fridge in there. So this is roughly some of the things you can have and then you can also have on the overheads, you can have glass doors. Mm. Uh, glass doors do look uh, pretty cool. And again, we do this a lot in like bars uh, yeah. where, where people have like a games room. Um, glass doors are great, particularly if you have an LED light in each of those. Mm. Um, and that's probably the most common uh, most uh, common options, I guess, that that uh, people go with. Yeah, I agree. In terms of doors and everything, yeah. Yeah, mm. and you spoke about like the cool fridges and everything, which I think is gonna bring us perfectly into our next one, which is uh, all the appliances you can upgrade. Mm. Now, I know you can talk a lot about all the amazing appliances we have these days, but mm -hmm. just run through uh, some of the really cool options we have from like, you know, obviously the induction yeah. cooktops, yeah. the yeah. built-in and so forth. All right, let's try to do it as quick as I can. Uh, no, well, basically uh, one of our most uh, uh, popular thing is the 900 uh, cooker. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much nearly a one meter wide freestanding stainless steel cooker yep. that's got a gas cooktop and a massive 900 mil oven. For standard, it's pretty, it's pretty you awesome. You cannot yeah. go wrong with this. It looks good, it's super good to cook, mm. and we use Westinghouse, but as long as it's a good brand, you will be fine. 100%. Uh, so this is, in my opinion, a must. Um, if it was me, I wouldn't have uh, the 600 mil appliances, yeah, except yeah. from a sort of oven uh, tower. Uh, tower, which has a 600 mil oven, this yeah. is okay, but a 600 mil uh, cooktop, don't do it. It will hurt your resale. Yeah. Even if you're not a big chef and all that, I'm not a big chef, <laughs> <laughs> but don't do it. Don't don't get a 600 cooker because it will hurt your resale. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, then, so most people will have a gas uh, uh, cooktop, mm -hmm. And don't be scared if your area doesn't have uh, some sort of natural gas because yeah. you can always have gas bottles on the outside of the house. That's and it. if you think, you know, gas is not safe, nowadays those cooker are so good that if, um, yeah, they won't let the gas come with no flame, I guess. So yeah. so it, it it's really well made. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've probably built now, I think we calculate 1200 homes, uh, yeah, about plus. I reckon 1160 of those have gas cooked up. Yeah. We've never had an issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a good, good point, I think. And then you can go into the electric side of things. So some people okay. will have solar and they're like, no, I want my whole house to be electric. <laughs> And um, so you got a ceramic uh, cooktop. Now a ceramic uh, cooktop is good. Mm. However, at the same time, it's also a little bit dated. You know, yeah. a ceramic cooktop, you might find it in like a smaller unit that you are renting, you know? So yeah. my opinion on this would be to upgrade to a induction. Yeah. Now the greatest thing about a <laughs> you could, <laughs> Well, I did a- <laughs> You're like thinking about it yeah, before exactly. you actually say it. The greatest <laughs> thing about a induction uh, cooktop is if you have kids, they can't get burnt on the cooktop. That's it, yeah. Which is a really good- So obviously if, if you have something sitting on there, they will get burned on what's sitting on there because yeah, this yeah. will be hot. Yeah. But if you take that off, they won't be able to get burned in there. They won't be able to get burned in the flame. So cool. that's because of the way the induction co uh, cooktop works, which also means you need to have separate um, uh, cooking equipment. Yeah, yeah, it needs because to be normal induction compliant, work. Yeah, right? That's it. Yeah. But what I love about the induction uh, cooktop is how how streamlined and how, how slick it looks. Yeah. And again, particularly coming from someone that had a gas cooktop and the cleaning is annoying. <laughs> you know, like, you got all the the cast uh, stuff, uh, the things on top, and yeah, yeah. and you're cooking, and no matter how well you try, if you're cooking a stir fry, <laughs> shit's gonna go everywhere. That's you true. know, yeah. it's so annoying. So and you spend forty five minutes like with a gas cooked top, off, you gotta take it, the things yeah. off, put them on the side, clean it, <laughs> and put it back on, and yeah. it's quite annoying. Yeah. Uh, so with the induction, you just wipe it off and it's done. Yeah, that's it. But downside of the induction, it will cost a little bit more. That's it. And then you've also got- oh, right. <laughs> I'm keeping. <laughs> and then you've also got the different brands. So- That was what I was yeah, gonna Make sure you nice. stick, I would say with good brands, you know, like the Westinghouse and the Electrolux, the Smegs. Yeah. All those brands usually are pretty good. Mm. Um, recently, yeah, that's it. We've been uh, doing quite a few houses with Miele appliances and mm. it's, a, it's really impressive. I, I wasn't a big expert on appliances, but 
the shit that those appliances can do oh, is no, next it's level. Next level. It's it can so literally cool. cook your steak to this amount of this and this amount of this. You can control it from your app. And I was like, wow, this That's is it. next level. If you're not a chef, it'll make you look like a professional. It'll make you chef. look like yeah. a professional, particularly <laughs> if you're cooking cakes and stuff and mm. And then you can go, and that's when that's what's good when you go with a 600 mil wall appliances because yeah. you can have a tower and you can, for example, have a normal oven. Uh, you could have a steam oven. Microwave. You could have a built in microwave and you can have a coffee machine. Yeah, the um, coffee machines look sick. Like those built in ones. A coffee machine oh. is pretty <laughs> sick. So they are expensive. Like I think the, the Electrolux might be around 2,500 and a meal might probably be 5,000. Yeah, 5K. But they look really good. Oh, like they sick, they yeah. look really, really, really good. So mix mix up your appliances mm. and think of your kitchen as a layout. A lot of people don't even think of the microwave. You know, they design the plans mm. and then they realize I don't have a microwave space. You know, <laughs> yeah. so think about it. Where do you want it? You know, so, do you want it under the bench? Do you want it at a height? Yeah. And that's also something important. Again, we deal with a lot of uh, houses. And the owners are a little bit older mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily want to have to bend down uh, like on the bench to be able to reach the oven because it is quite annoying if you do a lot of cooking. And That's a great point. A lot of people enjoy their uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. So you can raise your sort of appliances and then, you know, and you can raise it as a subject to your height too. Mm -hmm. You might be 1.6 meter tall and you want it at that height. Again, just tell your sort of builder the exact height that you want. They can help with that. That's it. And it would make your cooking much easier. 100%. Um, a couple of things else I wanted to touch on. So uh, you've also got the different types of range hoods. Oh, range hood has so many types here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously you can get your built-in ones and your undermounts. And your yeah, so you've got your uh, your standard canopy, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, usually a stainless steel thing with a glass or a stainless steel uh, sort of bottom. Yeah. Uh, yes, the glass is a little bit harder to clean. Mm -hmm. um, so now CMA has a stainless steel one, which I think looks really amazing. Yeah, it looks way better. Um, then you can have a slider wrench hood, yes. which the slider wrench hood also has the tendency to look a bit cheaper in my opinion a, bit dated a well. little bit dated yeah, yeah. sort of the things you find in an apartment from mm. the 1980s yeah uh, just a little bit unless dated. that's the vibe you're going for then it's unless this totally is the vibe gonna work. you're going so. for uh a big thing we sell is the undermount wrench hood. the undermount wrench hood you don't see so pretty much all you see is the overhead cabinets mm. uh the undermount wrench hood, like the name says is under the the, the uh, soft cabinet mm -hmm. um, looks good. Yes, a little bit more expensive. If I remember well, by the time you had the cabinet, it's probably seven ninety nine or seven twenty nine, something around those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do a lot of it. Um, you do have to be mindful of the clearance between the cooktop and the wrench hood, particularly mm -hmm. if it's gas, uh, because sometimes this might need to be increased. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, wrench hood, and also make sure that. Um, specify to the to your builder that they dug the wrench root to the outside. Yeah. Particularly if you're doing a lot of uh, cooking, ideally you don't want the wrench root to just recycle. Yeah. Some have that uh, function, but ideally you want it to be uh, duct it outside. And the more and the more spicier of cooking you do, the more you want it to <laughs> duct it outside. Yeah. And also think, think about this too, because some people might, I, I guess you might have a window or a door, you also don't want to duct it right there. Yeah. If it was me, I ducked it quite a little bit further yeah. so that I don't know, I don't open my door and actually all that air <laughs> comes back in. in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I can think of that we haven't talked about in terms of appliances is um, colors. Colors of appliances. Oh, so true. You have things like the stainless steel. True. You've got the black these days. You've got white these days. Literally. Yeah any color, um, even the styles. So for example, Smeg offer like a really cool, like traditional like Hamptons mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. sort of type of appliance. But yeah, there's loads of different options. Yeah, what that. we found quite popular and we've got it at the display home at Newport is a dark stainless. Yeah. I think that looks so good. That looks yeah. so good. Uh, I'm a big fan of black too. Th those black appliances look so good. I agree. Uh, particularly if you have a modern house. Yep. Um, and usually you can get each each and every of those appliances to match. So the microwave, the oven, and the uh, cooktop. Mm. Um, and then yeah, things like Miele do, do, do that white one, yeah. which looks pretty cool. And they do that uh, that mid gray, mm. which also looks really, really good. So yeah, I plenty agree. of colors. And it is something to think about when you are designing your kitchen because everything ideally needs to match. Yeah. Particularly again, because the kitchen is probably one of the biggest selling point in your house. I agree. People yeah. are gonna buy your house because of the kitchen and the bathroom and obviously the house itself, yeah. but the kitchen 
is such a big uh, selling point. I agree. Mm. Um, just really quickly before we move on from appliances as well, just touch on when you get the um, like literally integrated appliances. Mm. So your kitchen has the cupboard tree doors over the top mm. and everything like that. Yes, you can get two things integrated. I, I guess you can get the wrench hood. Uh, the dishwasher can be fully integrated so mm. that you literally don't see anything. You you don't even know there's a wrench hood. Uh, a dishwasher, not a wrench hood. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I was like, Roger, the dishwasher yeah, is what yeah. I meant. Um, and uh, and it's pretty cool because how you know it's on, there's a there's a red laser that you see on the floor, mm. uh, usually depending on the uh, dishwasher, but most of them. So yeah. really cool to have a integrated uh, dishwasher. And the final thing you can integrate is a fridge. Mm. Uh, a little bit more work with a fridge, depending on the fridge you have. But again, in my opinion, how good does it look to not be able to see the fridge? Oh, I think it looks so good. It's so sleek. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you do need to maintain it, yes, if you do need to change that fridge, you probably need to buy the same brand of fridge. Yeah. But that's yeah. about it. I think, you know, like all, all those companies would have uh, some warranties. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so in, in terms of uh, sub warranties, again, just think of a good brand so that you don't have to worry about that sort of things. Awesome, so I think that summed up the appliances really, really well. Um, another great feature, uh, obviously, of your kitchen with your island bench uh, and the bench that you, you know, your cooktop is on is the stone. So you can get loads of different thicknesses of stone. Um, the one we offer as standard is 20 millimeters, hey, throughout your entire home. That's usually what most builders have is a 20 mil stone. Yeah. For sure, um, but that's not all you can get. You mm. can get loads of different options, hey. That's it, and the first thing I'm gonna say is, some people think, I think most people would think that, that you know, you can upgrade your 40 mil bench top or 60 mil bench top, and they think this is the thickness of the actual bench top. Mm. It's not. You know, you might think oh, I'm getting a 40 mil bench top because it's stronger. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. The bench top always stays 20 mil, unless you're going natural stone and you might be able to get a 30 mil bench top. But apart from that, I. Uh, the new stone bench tops, which are all uh, sort of engineered stone, mm -hmm. are 20 mil. Mm. And basically what happens is when you want to do, say, a 60 mil bench top, all you have to do is have your 20 mil, cut on a 45, have a 60 mil front and return at the bottom. So it's just an edge. So it's basically it's basically a fake 60 mil edge, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so which... The good thing about this is you can pretty much do anything you want. Yeah, yeah. You can go 40, you can go 60. We've done some at 100. 100, yeah. I think the display home at Calandra might even have 120. There you go. Uh, so you can literally do pretty much anything you want mm. to the point where you can go to a full waterfall end yeah. and that's literally a 900 high, that's it. I guess, edge. Um, it looks sick though. So yeah, so, so you can go from the 20 mil uh, to usually the most common is 40. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can... You can add your waterfall ends on the side of the island, which are also very common uh, sort of upgrade. Sure. And just reverting back onto the stone, so you've obviously got a few uh, bench top options. You've got the laminate bench tops, which are the timber one. Yes, I'm not even going to talk about it because it, it, it it's just so old and yeah, not yeah. used anymore. Yeah. Then Don't you got your bother. engineered stone. So if you think of your scissor stone, your lethal stone, your smart stone, all those are engineered stone. They yep. are a stone that is that is manufactured. Yep, yep, that's it. Uh, now you might think, oh, it's manufactured, so it's fake and uh, it's not great. Well, no, it's actually probably stronger than normal stone. Yeah. And it doesn't need the maintenance of, of, normal stone, of, yeah. sort of normal mm. stone, which is why most uh, builders use this and why it's so popular uh, because mm. you don't need to seal it. You know, um, you don't need to have to worry about dropping your wine on it and it's going to stain it. So it's you, a, you don't have all those, those are sort of issues and it's cost efficient. I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Like just because it's an engineered stone or whatever, it mm. doesn't mean that it still doesn't look classy. That's it right. It still looks incredibly classy. That's right. They it have looks some great. amazing, uh, you know, different types of Stone. Well, that's the thing. They replicate it so well now that yeah. you can get the look of a natural stone without having the maintenance or the price of natural stone. Because natural stone, and when I say natural stone, we're talking marble, uh, mm -hmm. granites, all those type of stone are natural stone. So you basically dig a hole on earth, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> grab that block, you cut it into 20 mil uh, slices, yeah. you've got your stone. That's it, unless so that's you know stone. someone from Mars or something that can get it. I mean, you might be able to get natural stone yeah. from there too. Yeah. <laughs> How cool would it be a stone bench top from Mars? Right. But anyway. What a uh, feature. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> um, well, where was I going with this? Uh, but yes, your natural stone is also really nice. And uh, yeah. I will say if you are building 
a really upmarket home that's possibly above eight hundred thousand dollars, I would consider it because it looks so good. For sure. Um, and if you and the best way to pick those stones is to actually go to the stone supplier. So mm. usually uh, there's a stone supplier that have a massive warehouse and they stock all the stones and you can just go there. Yep. Uh, you can pick the stones that you want and just buy, say, five slabs. Um, yeah, so it is great. We do a few houses like this and I always enjoy it because those stones look absolutely incredible. However, Engineer Stone, they've replicated, repli replicated, replicated, <laughs> replicated <laughs> the look. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> yeah. They've replicated the look of natural stone so well uh, and the prices are so good that it it's a no brainer for like 99% of, of our clients. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you can think of about stone before we move No, on? the only thing that I always say is always be mindful if you have a stone bench top, never put a hot pot straight into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We usually say this at handovers uh, because you will not see it maybe right away, but uh, stone doesn't like a rapid change in uh, soft temperature. So it mm -hmm. will not like the rapid change from cold to really, really hot and it will cause the stone to crack. For sure. Awesome. So there's your disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, sinks. Sinks. An important part of the kitchen. So you can get loads of different types of sinks, different colors of sinks, different oh. <laughs> everything. There's so much. Right? When it comes to sink and sink mixers, there's mm. literally so much. And it's important to think about it too, because some people may, let's face it, never use the sink. That's it. They got a dishwasher and you know they're not gonna use it, but some people are gonna use it a lot. So think about this, think about the warranties on the sink and think about the finish of that sink. So from stainless steel to black finish, mm. uh, but black can be like a dark stainless, so it can be like a granite yeah. type of finish. Uh, and then you have the Hamptons farmhouse type looking uh, ceramic sinks. Mm. Uh, so you always have those. So you've got plenty, plenty of sink auction from top mount to under mount sink. That's now- it. Do you want square, rectangle, circle, Oh, that's exactly right. Oval. That's what do you exactly want? right. There's so many, so many options. And um, I love the under mount and it has been extremely uh, so popular because mm. the top mount sink looks, I guess, a little bit old school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you always get that silicone around which you have to clean and all that. Well, the under mount sink, as the name says, sits at the bottom of the stone, it's glued under. Mm. Uh, it's just very neat and, and looks great. Yeah, a little bit great. more expensive, uh, not just the sink to buy, but obviously to install it, mm. uh, but it looks really, really good. I agree. Um, is there anything else um, people need to know about the sinks? No, the only thing that I've seen a lot that I actually really like is when you have a kitchen and a butler's pantry, and again, 90% of the homes we do have this nowadays, um, a lot of people put, the sink that is meant to be in the bottle, so the smaller sink mm. in the uh, kitchen mm. and put the sink that you actually use in the uh, butlers. And I find this to be a great idea yeah. because that's the whole purpose of a butlers. Yeah, it's to it. have all the, the shit the in mess, there. So yeah. have your really nice sink in your kitchen, smaller sink, cause you're not gonna be using it much. Maybe you're gonna use it to fill a glass of water or yep. put a plate in there, but have the sink that you actually use in the uh, butler's pantry. Same thing with the dishwasher. I would also have the dishwasher in the butler's pantry yeah. so that again, you keep everything in there and your kitchen always stays really nice. 100% agree. Uh, perfect. So another great thing that is closely related to the sink is obviously the tapware. Mm -hmm. So um, similar thing applies really. Hey, with the tapware, same thing. You can get all the different colors mm -hmm. from your brush brass to your mm -hmm. matte black, your gun, whatever you pretty much want. Plenty of colors, yeah. Plenty Even of the different types of spout you mm -hmm. want. Whether mm -hmm. you want like a big gooseneck or you want the one where it can like, what do you mm -hmm. call it when it pulls out again? And it's just 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 a flexible, I guess, yeah. stop. Uh, yeah. Which I really uh, so recommend. Um, particularly if you're gonna be washing a few dishes and stuff, it's so hard with like a fixed up. Yes, you might swivel to the side, but you can't do much. Yeah. Uh, where a lot of those tabs, and we have them in the room here, is just a pull out, uh, so flexible tab, and you can just wash your whole sink. Again, I think we might charge 149, so it's not like yeah. it's, it's crazy expensive. And again, have your kitchen with your really nice fancy tap, you know, you might have a brush brass tap or, or something. Have your bottle spentry with a flexible one, um, so that you can use and you can clean things. Yeah, that's it. And it's important as well. What style are you going for? If you want super modern, mm. we have the super modern sleek taps. If you want like a Hamptons look, we have the Hamptons sort of mm. old school taps. Mm. Hey, it just really depends on whatever style you want. Mm. And mm -hmm. yeah, don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, so perfect. So we've talked about the stone. We've talked mm. about your cabinetry. Now let's talk about the splashbacks. Mm. 
<laughs> Again, there is so many different there's options. So many options. So many yeah. different options. So obviously, the most uh, I guess cliche one would be your tiled splashback. Mm. But you can't just have any tiled splashback. There's loads of different options and lays that you can get for mm. your splashback. Hey. Yeah, I mean, where do we even start with this? Like, it's a whole <laughs> different topic. It's true. But so the f the first thing is you can mix and match. So you could have, for example, a lot of what we do has a window splashback yeah. and tiles on the sides. Mm. I think it looks great, um, brings light into the kitchen. And like we were talking about, you can even put some green plants at the back and just bring a whole different vibe to your kitchen. Yeah, bring As the outdoors in. That's exactly right. <laughs> have have really nice palm trees or like some nice plants at the back. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just like, <laughs> so I love that look. I think it just brings life into the air of kitchen as opposed to like, like a very bland yeah, type no. of kitchen. I agree. Then even if you have a window and you've got tiles or glass or mirror on the side, you can even change your windows. Um, so a window will have a Slovakia tray around. Mm. Uh, I love the look when you have a window splashback and you delete the Slovakia tray. You pretty much square set that uh, so window and you so tile nice. the front and you tile the side. So all you see is a really nice trim all around your windows yeah. and you have tiles on the front and tiles on the side. To me, this finish is so neat yeah. uh, and it, it just looks amazing. And all you have to do is just yeah, tell your builder to not have the Slovakia tray, have a trim and tile the reveal of the window. So the inside of the window is called a reveal. Mm will cost a little bit more, yeah. but the finish, and in terms of cleaning too, you know, do you really want to have so timber easy, that's yeah. gloss? Like it doesn't look that great. Yeah. So this is a great finish. Uh, going back to the tiles, so you can still have the tiles on the side and mm -hmm. you, there's so many choices. Uh, there's so many patterns from the hang bone to the stack lay to the colors. Um, there, there's so many options. Subway tiles, pencil Subway tiles. Subway tile, and that's gonna depend on the look you're going yeah. for. Yeah, that's that's many. Um, then in terms of splashback, there's a few more options. Mm. You could have you could have a stone splashback, yeah. which we have at Newport, for example, where cool. the back is stone. So you could have a stone splashback. You could have a glass uh, splashback. So glass splashback, like the name says, is just glass that's painted at the back. Mm -hmm. Uh, what colors can you pick with that? Pretty much all all the colors you want from the Dulux range is the uh, colors you can have as a glass uh, splash bag. So this is option two. Uh, you can have a mirror splash bag. Now you can have a normal mirror, but usually what we do is we do the smoked mirror. And the smoked mirror just bring that luxury yeah. look uh, to your kitchen. Uh, yes, if you have it directly at the back of your cooktop, it might be a little bit more weird to clean. Mm. But at the same time, is it more work than having tiles and grout, which is also going to be hard to clean? That's it. And particularly the mirror, you can always clean the grout. Once it's too, once it's gone too far, you really have to scrape it and put new grout. You be, you be the judge. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you be Jesus. <laughs> you be Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so you be the judge. <laughs> That's what I was meant to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can have uh, all those options. I think that's, I mean, there's more than that actually. You could have acrylic uh, splashbacks. Not the biggest thing, it's a bit of, of a plastic splashback. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah. Most m most of the time we do stone and I love the look of the glass. I think a fixed uh, window looks great, particularly, mm. like we said, if you tile the uh, sort of reveals. Mm. And I also love the look, which we're gonna do that at the display home in North Harbor. I'm trying to yeah, think where. North Harbor, yeah. um, finger tiles, yeah. how good do they look? Again, yeah. you put a white trim, uh, finger tiles, and you return them, and it, it just changes your whole kitchen. That's it. Um, perfect, so I think that's all uh, in terms of splashback, <laughs> pretty much nailed there. Um, now, Public service announcement, Chris. One thing we feel that both of us, we can agree on that we need to pay more attention to in our kitchen is lighting. Yes, yes, and it always upsets me and I think it upsets you too when we do a, <laughs> when we do a handover. Seriously, he cries. And <laughs> so we we try to do handovers on most of the homes we build. Like literally 99% we go to those oh. houses, we set it up and we check everything. Every single one. And when we have a really, really nice kitchen and it doesn't have an LED strip light to like showcase everything, it, it does upset me yeah. quite, quite yeah. a bit. A little part of us gets <laughs> a bit cut. Yes, yeah. so what? one of the biggest thing you can do, particularly if you have a really nice splashback, 
is to add a recessed uh, surveillance strip light in your overhead cabinets. Um, what the builder does or what the cabinet maker does is they have their board at the bottom of the overhead cabinet. They create a recess and the LED strip light sits in there. And then there's a, there's a smaller self cover, so mm. it doesn't like it's gonna fall. It's super easy to keep clean, but what it does is it lights up all the bench and the splash back in, in the same manner. Yeah, it looks so and good. Uh, every time we see it, we're like, wow. wow. Like again, for the small <laughs> amount <laughs> yeah. that it costs, Depending if you have a wrench hood um, that is not the, that is not on the mount, it might cost a little bit more sometimes because I guess the LED strip light comes with a transformer, so you That's might it. need to have a power point on the left cabinet and a power point on the right. Mm. But usually, it's nicer with an overhead with an undermount wrench hood and the LED strip light that runs all oh the way. Goodness. I think that looks sick. Uh, personally, I would even do the kitchen and the uh, butlers if you can. Yeah. Uh, because it just lights up everything and it looks so good. So your lighting is critical. And same thing, you know, with your island bench, yeah. you want to have either your pendants or you want to have some really cool um, black... Um, LED light bars. Uh, track lights. Track uh, lights. Light bars look good. It's pretty much like an LED strip light, but just built. Yeah, suspended. <laughs> uh, and yeah, again, when we see one of those light bars and it lights up the whole bench, it just makes the whole thing stand out. Yeah. So I would say think about your lighting in your kitchen because some of the houses, uh, and, and, and not just what we build, obviously, but like everyone that I mm. see, even when we go to a display home, it's, it's poorly lit. Yeah. And... Um, it's amazing the difference that an LED strip light and a few more downlights would make to your whole kitchen. That's it. You don't even have to change anything. It would just change your whole kitchen just by the lighting. That's it. I've even seen ones like really cool ones where like they open the uh, pantry doors or whatever mm. if they don't have a butlers and the lights come on as they have to do that. For, for cool. sure. So cool. yeah, when we're talking about the glass doors, you could have your sort of LED light in yeah. there. Uh, you can have it like this. This is going a bit fine cost, but it looks good where you'd have a pantry with two doors and each of the shelf has an LED strip light. Yeah, nice. Now that's a whole different ball game, but it <laughs> looks so good. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but a um, bit of a different topic, but walk-in robes and you can even have like an LED truck light like that. And again, if we didn't have this, mm. that walk-in robe will look okay. Yeah. This changes the whole robe. Like, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, yeah. but in here, it changes the whole place. It changes this wardrobe from being Completely. okay to wow. And that's the one mistake that I will not make in the next display homes. I will add a lot more lighting in the uh, kitchens mm -hmm. and in the wet areas while, while we talk about this. We spoke about this when we talked about mm. the bathroom uh, podcast and go and watch this too, because it's quite good, I think. Yeah, uh, I but lighting is really important. Again, we walk through our sometimes some really cool bathrooms and it's just missing light. Yeah. And yeah, I it's think it's very dark and it's dull. very dark and uh and yeah, lighting just changes the whole thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree. All right. Um last couple of points before we head off, because it mm -hmm. is getting a bit of a longer podcast. Um hopefully it's been super informative and it's kept you along this far though. So that's the goal. Um, but the butler's pantry slash second kitchen. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's getting a lot more popular these days to yeah, have your butlers or like they people are doing now, turning it into a second kitchen. Oh, true, I mean, I love this idea. Uh, like ever since we we started to do it. So what Jaden means by that is you have your, your main kitchen mm. and your main kitchen is gonna be there to look good, let's mm. face it, and to store things, but it's there to look good. Yeah. Where you're gonna be cooking is your butler's slash uh, second kitchen. Um, so that's where you have another set of, of, of appliances. Yes, you might be 600 appliances in there, uh, but at least this is where you're going to be cooking. Yeah. And I sort of love the idea because even if you have guests, your main kitchen is always clean. They mm. can sit there, everything is clean. You don't have to worry about it. And your butlers is where you do the work. That's great. When you think about it, that's the whole purpose of a butlers. Mm -hmm. A butler's pantry is where you actually cook it. And so many times we do a butler's pantry and people don't really use it that I feel if they just put in some appliances and made the uh, butler's pantry a little bit bigger. That's it. Boom. It doesn't have to be that big of a butler's pantry, but say mm. if you have 2.4 meters of bench and your appliances, yeah, you've you got plenty of space to, uh, to cook. So that's been a, something that I have seen, we have seen, and we've been doing a lot more of, and I find the idea super cool. I totally agree, yeah. 100%. Um, like you said, it just brings another another level of mm. sort of luck to your house. Yeah, and particularly, like, again, if you're gonna be, you know, some people are, are great, uh, I mean, they love to cook, whether it's yeah. spicy food, whether it's this or that, and fish, you yeah. know, 
Yeah. It's quite annoying. I mean, I remember when he used to cook fish, like the whole house is flooded for about an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, like when is that fish I know, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You get a small cloud going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, at least if you've got a butler's, um, and again, you can have a bottles with even a sort of upgraded uh, sort of ranch hood. We're talking about so many nationalities too, like, you mm. know, that each of those have different cooking and some people do a lot of uh, cooking that I think. Um, some people cook for a lot of people. So it might exactly be good, right. Yeah? You might have a huge uh, uh, sort of family and, mm -hmm. and you do a lot of uh, cooking. So, you know, why not have everything in the bottles and then you can set the thing in the, the kitchen and it looks good. That's it. Or it might be Christmas and you've got the entire family over. So, Why yeah. not use yeah. both ovens? Mm -hmm. You know. Or another point actually, which I just thought about it now, but again, for example, you might have kids. Yeah. And you'll be worried the kids might, you know, touch the cooker and the oven and all that. If you have a butler's pantry with a cavity slider, mm. uh, problem solved. That's it. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Lock it. Done. That's it. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. Perfect. So before we head off from this podcast, um, we've been running for a little while now. Is there any other cool little upgrades, tips, tricks, um, affordable things uh, that you would suggest for people, for their kitchen? If not, we'll get out of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, the main things that I can see is people don't spend enough time uh, thinking carefully about the kitchen and the design. Mm. They think, you know, it'll be fine. There's a few doors and a few drawers and splash bag, yeah, whatever. But uh, I would say spend a bit more time. And mm. like we said on multiple uh, podcasts, including the color selection, and go and watch this too mm -hmm. because it's quite good, I think, is, um, yeah, just put a bit more thoughts into it. Look at a lot of inspiration. What do you like, you know? And you'll be surprised, but you don't necessarily have to spend that much more. Mm. Maybe it's a few drawers here. Maybe it's an LED strip light. Maybe it's the window, like I was saying, with a tile that reveals. So you don't even have to go to a mirror splash bag. You can just have a tiled uh, splash bag. But try to do those extra things to make your kitchen pop. That's it. And uh, yeah. Just think as well, like, you know, is my fridge going to fit in that space? Is the... You know, um, is it a little bit squishy between your island, ben island bench and your back bench? Do you need mm. to bring that out a little bit so you got a bit more room? Mm. You know, there's just little things like that, like that mm. you can have. That's exactly thought. right. And the more of a chef you are and the more you love cooking, the more you should think about this. Yeah. Even to the, the point where, where do you want your PowerPoints? Where are you going to sit your coffee machine if you don't have a belted one? Where are you going to sit that? Mm. Where are you going to sit your toaster? Um, mm. because you, you really need to think of all this so that when you use that kitchen, everything is ready to go and just uh, really practical because the last thing you want is, oh, I've got a toaster and I'm missing a PowerPoint where I really want one, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, people don't spend enough time designing their kitchen. Mm. Um, in my point of view, it's so important that y you just want to think and spend that extra time, yeah. go to display homes, look at Instagram, follow us on Instagram That's and it. get a bit of inspiration so that you can make your kitchen uh, stand out. And again, I don't think you have to spend that much more. I don't even think you have to go to the four meal bench shop and all that. You, you know, yeah, it. it's yeah. sort of, this is phasing out a little bit now. I, I think uh, people are phasing out from the waterfalls and a, and a 40 mil stone because there's so much more you can do to make it look classy and trendy. Yeah. And um, and the cost of saving you have by not going the 40 mil, for example, you and can just, spend a lot more yeah, on the rest. That's it. <coughs> LED strip light along the back. That's exactly right. <laughs> but you had a good point with the fridge. If you have an ex existing fridge, mm. uh, make sure it will fit in the fridge void. And keeping in mind that um, no matter what builder you work with the measurements on a floor plan are frame to frame. Mm. This is very important, frame to frame, remember that. Because if it says one meter fridge space uh, on the floor plan, it will mean that the finished uh, space for your fridge is probably gonna be one meter less, 10 mil plasterboard, uh, so either side, so that's 980, mm -hmm. less 10 mil skirting, depending on the skirting thickness you have, mm -hmm. that's 960. Mm -hmm. uh, so always think about this, um, and if you are buying a fridge, the same apply. Have a look at the fridge you may want to buy, have a look at the dimension, and make sure your builder has enough space for that fridge. That's it. Because the last thing you want is move into your new house, put in the fridge, and it doesn't work. Mm. It, it doesn't fit, or it's just not suited to the area, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, that's that I, I, I would say is quite important. Uh, but yeah, something 
many people don't know that our fan is, uh, and we, we put that on all our plans so that people know, yeah. uh, but no matter what builder you deal with, uh, the measurements on a plan are frame to frame. So same thing applies if, you, if you're going to buy your bed or a lounge, it's frame to frame. So always allow, I guess, for the plasterboard and the skirting. That's it, perfect. I think that was a great tip to end on. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, podcast and share it with people who you think are going to get value out of this. Again, if you haven't already, follow us over on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, we'll see you next week. What do you reckon the next topic should be? I don't know, but before I forget, I wanted to give a shout out, <laughs> not to who you think I'm going to give a shout out yet, but shout out to Ben from Hammer Time Kitchens mm. and his whole team. Uh, ben, in my opinion, is the greatest uh, cabinet maker in Queensland, uh, probably the whole Australia. Uh, just so good. So follow them on Instagram. Yeah, they're uh, really, really good. They're really good. Uh, um, I mean, I love his work. And um, yeah, so I, I would recommend to follow them on Instagram. Mm. Um, and shout out, now that I thought about that too, to Dalia, yes. our receptionist. We were meant to be giving her a shout out probably about 20 <laughs> podcasts ago. Yeah. And I always forget. And uh, yeah, I just remembered. So shout go. out to Dalia. She got a shout out. Now she got happy. a shout out. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. So we'll see you next week with, I don't know, we don't kitchens, we don't bathrooms. What's next? Maybe bedrooms I, and wardrobes. I'd love to do, I think, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things that I wanted to do would, would probably be the different type of cladding. But if we stick mm. to the interior side of things, maybe flooring. That's not a bad we one got at all. tiles, we got laminates, we mm. got vinyl, we got engineer, we got solid timber floor. There's so many. Uh, let us know if you'd like to see that podcast, actually. That's it. That's a good point. <laughs> And I definitely think, yeah, we need to do that exterior one at- mm, It'd be good, all well. the different type of cladding because there's so much again from brick veneer <laughs> to Hebel to the James Hardy cladding to the trim deck and all those things. There's so many types of exterior cladding to the foam. Mm. You know, yes, there's foam as exterior cladding too. So from render to bagging to face brick. Right, mate. It's for another podcast, okay. all right? <laughs> all right, well, let's get out of here. Um, we gotta go, let's go train. And um, we will see you next week with another podcast. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.